Uh, I now request Mr. Uh, Muhammad Al Tawaini, the general manager of Ahmadiyya, to come forward and present the bouquet to His Excellency M. Ganapati, Ambassador of India. Marcus Williams to address the distinguished gathering. Good evening, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to address you all on this occasion, which is a significant milestone when we look at how the Kuwait India Business Council began its long journey five years ago. Five years ago, some of us got together and decided we put together around an organization which will help to promote bilateral trade relations. And today, it gives me even greater pleasure to see uh, some of the founding fathers of our organization who have grown along with the council for example, we have Mr. Ali al Badr here, at which time he used to be the general manager of a bank. Today he's the chairman of an investment company. He has grown along with the Kuwait India Business Council, I could say. And then we have uh, Mr. Yusuf al Badr. Uh, Mr. Yusuf al Badr was with, he was the sponsor for Indian Airlines and over the years he acquired Air India and he has got India together, in addition to Indian Railways. So, as we look at uh, the way the Kuwait India Business Council has uh, transformed itself, uh, we find that those who have played a leading role, a pivotal role, have also grown with the organization. And over the years, we found that uh, the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the De Deputy Director General had come over to Kuwait and then concluded a memorandum of association with the council to promote bilateral relations. And over the years, what we have attempted is to provide a vibrant platform for visiting delegations, for Kuwaiti businessmen, so that there is an exchange, there is a flow of ideas, of opportunities, of thoughts, and a direction in which how to carry uh, opportunities to its logical end. And then as the council began to look at opportunities, 
uh, we felt the time was opportune to start an India fund. And then we looked at uh, what could be the opportunity. So we discussed with uh, some of the investment companies here and then we succeeded over uh, a 30 day period to, to get all permissions in place for launching uh, what is known as the the world's first India focused Sharia compliant open ended equity fund. And during an interview with one of the networks, I had stated that uh, by the end of the year, uh, there would be at least three funds from this region. And then I recall it was December 10th of uh, the year 2006 when the Exim Bank had uh, invited me to speak at the inauguration of their office. Uh, one of the statements I had made was that even as I speak to you here in Dubai, uh, the Commercial Bank of Kuwait uh, opens its fund for subscription on December 10th. And we are proud that we have today with us the chairman of the uh, Commercial Bank of Kuwait here, Mr. Abdul Majid Al Shati. We welcome you here, sir. And we appreciate your initiative in launching an India fund. Now we have a Sharia fund here, we have an India fund. Now this gives an opportunity for people to invest money within the safety and sanctity and the strict control of one of the toughest regulators in the region, the Central Bank of Kuwait. And also the Security and Exchange Board of India, which is equally tough. Now moving over from funds, we, look at, we looked at the opportunities where FDI initiatives need to be taken. And that is when uh, Mr. Praveen Tandon, with one factory already uh, in the bank, looked at expansion opportunities. And to some extent, we, we helped uh, the formation of the second unit. And today, uh, in, in a very light way, what I would say is that uh, probably looking at the tremendous opportunities and the profitability of the industry in India, Algana would depend more on India than on Kuwait for their bottom line. And then we looked at other opportunities. And uh, recently I was with a group of investors in India where we, we looked at uh, several manufacturing facilities. And then I'm, I'm pleased to say that the reception with which Kuwaiti investors were received, the manner in which they were guided to various plants, various factories uh, throughout the country was something which indicated that India is open for business. And then the fact that there is so many visitors from this region. Now we traditionally we speak of what tremendous relationship we have. It's, it's a great country, we are in the neighborhood. But then the money flow never flowed from Kuwait to India. It, it went to Europe, it went to America. But then times have changed and the realization has set in. And this is understood by the fact that even if you look at last year's Republic Day, uh, it was uh, His Highness the, uh, uh, the King of Saudi Arabia who was the chief guest. And then following that we had the visit of His Highness the Emir of Kuwait to India. Now all these visits and now on the annual is a visit from uh, the King of Bahrain to India. All this is an indication that investors are looking at India in a different light. Because the kind of opportunities, I'm not going to elaborate that here, the kind of opportunities which you see there are what is needed because money in any case has to find its own avenues and then profitability is the sole guide for such avenues. We, we helped some of the investors here to sign an agreement uh, with a leading Indian company in the manufacturing sector and soon you will find two, three uh, bigger outfits coming into Kuwait through the efforts of Kuwaiti businessmen whom the council is proud to be associated with because they mean business. And the, at the council, as we say, this is where business matters. So I would like to conclude by saying, uh, by extending uh, a word of welcome to all of you and also if any of you have the kind of uh, a vision which needs to be fulfilled by assistance from India. Today you have the chairman of the Exim Bank here in Kuwait. And 
India is open and India is willing to provide all that is necessary to help grow businesses together. And uh, I would like to conclude with just a few sentences about the Exim Bank. The Exim Bank has been a tremendous catalyst for growth. Many years ago in the 80s, now the success stories of the Exim Bank are truly legendary. In the 80s, the Exim Bank founded a very small struggling company. And then over the years, the company was nurtured by Exim Bank. And today, uh, this company is, is a $3 billion global giant in the software business. And this company started with a, with a modest capital of around $1,000. So this is the extent of support which the Exim, uh, the Exim Bank provides. You have their, their delegation here. And when any of you have the need to look at India, you have no other opportunity other than better opportunity other than the gateway to India opened by the Exim Bank. I welcome all of you and thank you very much for being here.